Um, my name's Suzanne Bryan, and if you're joining me for the first time, um, I'm a knitter, and I like to make educational YouTube videos uh, on top of my regular knitting and other things that I do. If you're a returning visitor, welcome back! Yay! I love to see you. Um, let's see, turn the comments on. There we are. Let's see who's here. Okay, so um, this vid today is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to try some of my new skills that I've been learning for making these live streams. And that is going to involve uh, showing you my computer screen in addition to me talking. And I'm going to show you how to use my YouTube channel uh, via a computer or an iPad. And the iPad's similar to a phone, so the phone people should be able to get it from the iPad. So let's see who's on here. There's Rona Shane, hello, and Diana Danko, Elizabeth Nice Nielsen, Susan Day, Francoise, my favorite people, Catherine Continental Combined, Fatima DeHan, Susan McBride, Nancy Porter, Dolise, hello, Serena Burhans, Polly Edwards, Kurt Payne, Karen Russell, Priscilla Lopez, Joan Wilk, Alastair Kirk, Marjorie Bullman, and Renee. And there'll be some more people on here shortly, shortly, I'm sure. Luana Hendricks, um, Serena Burhan. So, I know that a lot of you have used my YouTube channels. And but I want to show you how to get the most out of them, how to easily find what you're looking for. I have so many YouTube videos and there's so much good information on there, but I know that it can be frustrating sometimes to find exactly what you want. So I'm going to show you. We're going to start out, as I said, by using uh, it on a computer. So I'm going to share my computer screen with you. And um, that's my channel. Let me show you though that if you're not on my channel, the first thing you would do is you would just go to YouTube. Just type in YouTube and you're going to get something like this. All these things. Then you can type in as Suzanne Bryan. And there's my channel, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. That's my main channel. Now let's say um, and then you can click on that right here. You can see my little cursor. You can click on that and it takes you to this page right here. This is my main page and this is what you would see if you are not already a subscriber. And you see this little thing over here that says subscribed. Well, I guess this is for a person who is subscribed. So you're going to see this. It says subscribed. And right next to that subscribed is a bell. So if you have not already subscribed, this button will be red. Let's see if I can unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Okay. So this is what it looks like. You can see that it is red, right? And then once, and there's no bell next to it. Once you hit the red and you say you want to subscribe, now I'm subscribed. Now the bell is plain. There's no vibration marks on either side of it. That means I will never get a notification about any new videos that are coming up. But if you click on it, you have a choice of picking all or none or personalized. I guess right now it's on personalized. If you want to always get notifications when I post a new video, then you would click all. If you never want to find out, then you click none. Personalized, I don't really know what that does, but so I'm going to click all. Now notice that the little bell is dark and it has vibration things next to it. So that's the number one thing is subscribing to my YouTube channel. And I would appreciate it if you haven't subscribed, if you do. Now, the one little drawback is that you need to have a Google account in order to subscribe. Um, and 
you know, if you're using Gmail, you already have a Google account. If not, just sign up. It's no big deal. It's just, you know, a formality. YouTube is actually owned by Google. So Google wants you to be a Google member in order to act, act uh, actively engage with YouTube. You do not need to be a, a Google person. And if not, then you can't subscribe to my channel, but you can look at all the videos. It does not restrict you from looking at the videos. It just restricts you from subscribing and from also putting a little heart on my video, a thumbs up, or leaving a comment. You can't do any of those things without a Google account. So the next thing, here you are on my channel. And I usually have some video that I you know, put up for people to see one of my most recent ones, or one I just choose, and that'll be the main one you'll see on this screen. Then underneath that, down here, will be the most recent videos that I've uploaded by date. So this is the last one that I did, and it was two months ago. Can you believe that? Uh, but it was, and it's been viewed over 10,000 times. This is the one prior to that, 2.6 thousand views etc etc so you can click on the arrow over here and you can just look at these by date if you want to those are just the most recent videos below that and I've, I customized this whole page for you to use these are my created playlists so I make a playlist this playlist is about the iTag bottom-up drop shoulder and there are 34 videos in that this is a new playlist because I'm just starting a whole series on i -Cord. So there's only one uh, video in it right now. This is for the undulant socks, and there's six videos in that playlist. This is about chart reading, and there's ten videos. And you can look over through these other playlists just like that. I have a lot of playlists. And it's just where I group videos together that I think you would want to watch sequentially. Then below that, this is a playlist on brioche knitting. And I chose this order here because brioche is something I'm very interested in. So this is a playlist. And you can see all of these videos have to do with brioche knitting. Then this is the playlist for Stranded or Fair Isle, Double Knitting, Mosaic, and then the last one down here is popular uploads. I don't know if you can see it's not pulling up. Just the most popular video. So that's the main page of my channel. You can see all of that just on that page. Now let's say, <coughs> excuse me, that you want to look at videos. You can see next to where it says home here, it says videos. If you click on that, it shows all of my videos and these are all, you can play them all if you want, but there's like 340 of them, so I don't know that you'd want to do that. They're in order of most recent publication to the oldest. Over here, you can see this sort, and you can sort by the most popular, the date oldest, or date newest. Right now, it's by date newest. If you go to most popular, it just resorts them to the order the Knit Perfect Thumb Gussets has had 583,000 views. The Toe one's 439, this one 318, etc. Now, the playlist, here's that's videos. Next is playlists. You click on the playlist, and here's all of my playlists. Each box here represents many videos within the box. So you can see all of these playlists. where I've sorted them into categories. Now some videos fit in more than one category and therefore they are included in more than one playlist. I think that's a great way, like for example, if you want to learn how to do brioche knitting, you would find the playlist on brioche knitting. Let's see where it is. <laughs> right here, down here. Brioche knitting, there's 23 videos. So let's look at that. So it starts with the top video. 
and there are ads. Let's skip the ad. So this starts with Hello, this particular and video. Welcome to my YouTube video on brioche. This uh, video is going to cover brioche in two colors, um, beginning and chart. Okay, and if you go over here to the side panel, it's going to show you all the other videos that are in this playlist. So you don't have to watch them in the order that they pop up. You can pick and choose amongst the videos in the playlist. If there's something, if you want to learn how to fix mistakes, you find one on fixing mistakes. If you want to learn how to do a cast on, you find the cast on. Here's fixing mistakes part one of two, fixing mistakes part two of two, etc. Now let's go back. Let's see. Come on, let's go back. Let me go back. Here's the playlist page. So that's all the playlists. The next says community. And this is where I have communicated with people in general. I don't think too many people use this though, but sometimes I post things here and people will post things in reply. Then the second one, the next one over, second from the last, is channels. And these are channels that I recommend. So these are all channels that I think that are worth looking at. And then the last is about, and that's just about me. You can see how many total views I have. Um, and I talk about my websites and where you can get in touch with me. So that's how you use the computer. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, let me look down here through these questions and see what I see, okay? Let's see. I want to close that. Okay, let me see. Let me look through and see if anybody has any questions. Remember, if you're going to ask a question, put it in all caps. It's easier for me to find it. And you can ask me anything. Uh, Fatima Dehan says, I contribute a bit for the most popular. That's very true. You know, if you watch a video, um, it, it brings my numbers up for me. Diana Danko says, I wonder if you watch a video more than once if it records it. It does not. It only counts one time. But if you watch it more than once, it says that you watch the video for longer, which also is one of the metrics that they count. And Diana says, then I helped contribute to popular ones too. Okay, Sabrina says, Serena says, the magnifying glass is helpful. Can we discuss more? Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I almost forgot. So here we see, let me close that off. Do you see this little magnifying glass here? Right here? You just click on that and you get the search a line shows up and let's say you want to know cast cast on okay and hit enter and it will take you to all of the videos that I have that are about cast ons and I have many 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 videos about cast ons this one here the invisible Italian cast on that's the very first video I ever made and um, so the quality is not wonderful. The teaching is good, but the quality of the video is not great. But all of these on cast on. So you can go back to that search bar. Let's say bind off. Bind off. And then these are all of the bind off videos. There are also a lot of bind off videos. You know, when I first started knitting, I thought there was one way to cast on and one way to bind off. I didn't learn any others until I did the Master Hand Knitting program. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so now let's say you're on your computer 
and you have not gone to YouTube yet. Let's just go to, I'm going to go to my Ravelry page, okay? So I'm over here, <coughs> excuse me, I'm over here in Ravelry, and um, I want to go to YouTube. So I can just type in, I want to find a video of a video by Suzanne on YouTube. I'm going to put Suzanne Bryan. I'm typing this in the in the address bar. Um, brioche helps if you can spell right. Knitting. Okay, now my search comes up. There comes my main channel, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan YouTube. Uploads from Knitting with Suzanne Bryant. It takes a gill tutorial, Ravelry. So you're going to find something by me about brioche knitting. So let's look at it. This will take you to the YouTube channel again. And then you can put in over here in the search bar, you can put in brioche knitting. Brioche. and see what pops up. And all of these videos are going to pop up. Okay. Um, if you don't know how to get to YouTube again, just put in my name, Suzanne Bryan, in the search bar. And you'll get my channel, Suzanne Bryan. Now let's do the off the cuff channel. So it didn't, you can see off the cuff is not here, right? Because I don't have it under Suzanne Bryan. I just have it under Suzanne. So just put in Suzanne off the cuff. And there I am. There's some, the videos from off the cuff. Here is Suzanne off the cuff. And the same thing. I have this page set up in a very similar manner. The most recent um, video is going to be on top. That's the one we're doing right now. It's right here on the front. And then the recent uploads. So the Off the Cuff channel, let me uh, go back just a bit. The reason I have two channels is Knitting with Suzanne Bryan consists of all short tutorials. Um, you want to find out a technique, you go to that technique, you play the video, there's, whoops, there's no chit chat. Um, you go right to the technique and you can learn it. When I first started doing these live streams, I started them on that same channel. And I noticed after I did a few that I lost a lot of subscribers. And the reason is I think that um, the people that want to watch the short to the point videos were not interested in hour long chit chat live streams. So that's when I decided to make the second YouTube channel, which is off the cuff. And that one is specifically for these longer live stream YouTube videos. In fact, all of the videos on Suzanne off the cuff are live. Um, and doing a live video is a lot different from doing one um, where I pre-record it and I can edit it. And I'll tell you a funny story about that. Um, quite a few years ago, I was at a knitting retreat and um, the instructor was asking me about some of my videos and how I made the videos. And I said, well, I use my phone. Here's my phone. I use my phone. I mount it like this actually like this. Um, I have a C-clamp. It's not right around here. I would show it to you. And I clamp the phone. I watch through my phone and I video my hands. That's how I make my tutorials. It's extraordinarily simple. And for many years, I did not even use any editing tools at all. I just shot it straight through. Most times I could do it in one pass, but sometimes I would do something really, really stupid and I would have to shoot it again. Like the wrong words come out of my mouth. And you'll still find some of my videos in the, that have that. Like I say left instead of right or pearl instead of knit, you know, and you don't catch it when you're doing it. And you may not even catch it when you do the replay because to you, you hear the correct word. It's often pointed out to me later on. 
But then when I found editing a software, I, I didn't have to worry about making bloopers because I could just cut them out. So th those are the pre-recorded tutorials that are on knitting with Suzanne Bryan. Those are all tutorials with a few live streams when I first started doing it. Then I made the second channel off the cuff, this one right here. And this is entirely, um, it's entirely live stream videos. So again, it has the same headings, home, videos, playlists, community channels about, and the search bar. So if you go to videos, you're only going to see two videos because I, oops, yeah, I'm sorry. It's going to show you all the videos. So this is from the most recent. This is today and going across. I have made some playlists in this. So we'll look at playlists. I have grouped them, guest interviews, which are fun. Don't you enjoy the guest interviews? Those are so darn fun. I'm meeting the most interesting people or reacquainting myself with them. Um, then the bottom up, the cable pillow, odds and ends, I tag yoke, starry starry night, and I should make one for the I tag cardigan. Maybe it's on the other channel. And then community, again, these, these are um, where I communicate with people, which I don't do much on here because I don't think very many people read it. Channels that I recommend, and I just recommend myself. I need to fill this out, don't I? Kind of. So there's back to the home. And again, you can search. Here's the search. So you can, let's in, uh, let's put shawl. Let's just see if this comes up. Shawl collar. Let's just see what happens, okay? Okay, so I discussed it in Suzanne Off the Cuff, number 29. So the word shawl collar have been used in all four of these videos. Okay, let me see what, there are some more questions here. Let's see. Deborah Cisnero says, great tutorial, thank you, whoops. Hold on, I have to answer this. Vic, I'm right in the middle of doing my live stream. Okay. Sorry. Big glitch. So, what was I going to say? Oh, the questions here. Luana Hendricks says, questions. This was a lot of work. Did you do this, Suzanne? I did all of this, yes. It And it... it it is a lot of work, but spread out over a lot of years. Sherry Cornick, question. When I try to rewind a video, it goes to a different video. Am I doing something wrong? Oh, what a great question, Sherry. Let me put this over here. What a great question. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go back to the um, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan page. And let's look at a video. And let me show you some things about that. Wow, what a great question. Okay, let's look at this video right here. Easy SSP. So we're gonna watch this. I'm gonna skip the ad. You know, these ads are always skippable, most of them. And I'll talk, remind me to talk about the ad in a second. Okay, so notice here Let's put it on pause because I want to show you some things. I need to do this, get rid of this in a way. Okay, do you see this little eye up here in the right top right corner? That's where if I've linked to any other videos that are associated with this, they'll be there and you can click on those to go to them if you want to. Now you'll notice down in the bottom, look down here, there's closed captioning, so you can turn on closed captioning if you want, and they'll all pop up. Some of them will pop up in a foreign language, some of them won't. So that's closed captioning. This is settings. This is amazing if you have not used this before. Click on this. You can do autoplay. You can do annotations. Play back speed. Click on this. You can make it go really slow, one-fourth time, half-time, three-fourths time, normal, 
one and a quarter time, one and a half time, one and three fourths, and two times. I do this when I'm watching other people's videos because I want to get right to the part I want to see. So I'll click on, on double time and then it goes really, really quickly. And you can stop it at any time and change the speed to slow if you want to. Okay. Now the next one is, this one is makes it a little picture in picture theater mode, you know, it's how big it is on your screen, these. This one makes it full screen. Now, there's another place where you can move back. Do you see this red bar here across the bottom? I'm over here. Okay, so the red bar, you can move that to anywhere you want in the video. And let's say you want to back up, you just move it back this way. Now, if you get to the end of the video, and you have this set on autoplay here on the settings whoops it will automatically go to the next video and it's too late now you've skipped this video so you would have to go up here to the top of your screen and go back one page and come back to here and play it again but if you want to play it again it's best to actually catch it before it ends let's say the red over here before it ends, just move this all the way to the back and play it again. Okay, here's the volume. You can turn it off or on. Let's see what else is in the settings. You can turn on subtitles. Um, and that's all that's in there. So let's see some more questions here, if that answered some of your questions. Let me take a look. Let's see. Sherry, if you hit the left arrow, that means previous video. You need to use slider at bottom of the video. Right. Serena, does the search look for words in the title of the videos only? This is an excellent question here. What happens is, um, let's turn this video off so it's not. In When I create the videos, that I can put tags in a special box underneath the description which is invisible you don't see so I try to add tags that have anything to do with that video whether it's in the title or not of course words that are in the title yes they will show but it, there can be words that aren't in the title and will you know it'll pull that screen up too for you so that's a great question let me see here I moved this Zoom to fit. Okay, so let's see some more questions here. Let's see. Rona, question, how can we be the most help to you on YouTube? The most help you can be to me on YouTube. That's Thank you for asking that. That is such a kind question. The most help you can be to me, number one, is subscribe. YouTube, the company YouTube, which is owned by Google, gives you credit based upon how many subscribers you have. The next one is views, of course, but the subscribers is more important. Let me turn that off. That's annoying. The subscribers is more important than the views. Then the other thing is sharing my videos with other people who would watch them. Um, you can share on Facebook. You can share on Ravelry. You can share on Reddit. You can share on Instagram wherever you want to share them so that someone else might view them and subscribe. Okay, thank you for asking that. David Hensley, can you show us some pictures of your roses? I can, but you know what? I'm just learning how to use this software. Let me see. I don't know. Nah, I'm not going to do that right now. I'll probably mess up the whole thing. <laughs> My roses are beautiful, and thank you for mentioning that, David. Okay. Okay, Sue M. says, The live videos do change algorithms. Another channel only keeps for a week or similar reasons. Um, the you the live streams are automatically saved to YouTube to last forever until I delete them. 
So I have the option of putting them on YouTube or not after they've streamed, and I choose the option to put them on there. So they should stay. In fact, this video, I'm streaming to Suzanne off the cuff, but after it gets put on and it's uh, prepared and everything for YouTube, I am going to actually share it to my other channel so that both channels will have this so people can see how to use um, the videos. Fatima says, question. Why the videos off the cuff comes to our email a few minutes later than you are online? Because there's a lag. There's a lag. But if you subscribe, there's two things. One is when I post these live streams, I always schedule them. So I may schedule them a few hours before they come on or a few days. But when I schedule them, you have the opportunity. If you click on the link before it's time to come on, but click on it early, you can hit the reminder button. That's probably what you're getting a little bit late. But if you also hit the subscribe button right here and that bell, you should also get a notification. And that should come to you as, well... It might come after the video is uploaded. So there maybe there's a couple minutes delay. I'm trying to think it it's it doesn't work right. Karen Russell, question. Does that mean I can't log into view if I've missed the live stream? No, you can still you can still watch the live stream and you don't have to log in. You do not have to log in anything to watch YouTube. But if you want to subscribe, leave a comment, or give me a thumbs up. You have to be a subscriber. Or you have to have signed in with Google. Most people, a lot of people have Google accounts, but if you don't, it's not hard to make one. They really don't take any personal information from you. Um, you know, it's your choice, personal preference. Sherry Cornick. She says, I see a video that says mix. What does this mean? That's a video playlist, and it's a mix of a variety of videos, and somebody else created that, and it's on my channel for some reason. Um, Sue M., what editing software do I use? I use, what I'm using right now is called Ecamm Live, and that's what I use for the uh, live streams, and I can do some editing in that, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's specifically made for Macs, and I have a Mac. The other that I use is called Final Cut Pro, and that is by Apple. And um, it's amazing. You can make actual real movies in it. Now, I only know the parts about it that I use. There's so much more that I don't know, and the learning curve is kind of steep, but you just get bits and pieces as you go forward. And during this uh, quarantine period that we're having, I've actually taken some classes in the Ecamm Live, which I'm using now, to learn how to use it better. In fact, I used to learn how to share my screen. See, I can, and I can switch around. Fancy, fancy. I learned how to do this in one of the courses that I've been taking. Okay, Sabrina, Serena, she wants to know, what is the annotation feature do? I do not know. That's a good question. If somebody else knows that, maybe they can answer it. And Jacoba says, Hi, Suzanne. Thanks for sharing your love. I love your podcast. Greetings from the Netherlands. Hello. And Champ says, Blur. Is it blurry? Is something blurring? Let me know. She's. I'm seeing a blur all of a sudden. Okay. I can't even see the question on the video, only in the chat. You might want to log out and log back in. See if anybody else is having that issue, okay? Okay, D. Verte says, can you show how to go back to the video you have lost? Well, first of all, what you can do, let me go to the video. When you're in the video, can you see down here where it says save? Right here. Can you see that? It says save. If you click on that, save to watch later, okay? 
Now it's saved it in my save list and I can always go back and find it. That is if you have signed into Google. If you have not signed into Google, you can't use any of these things down here. But if you have, have a Google account, you can save it. If you don't have a Google account and the video has come to the end, it's come to the end, let's make it go all the way to the end, then what you have to do is go up here to the, uh, on your whatever uh, uh, software, whatever system you're using, and hit the back arrow. And that takes you back to the screen you were when you started the video. And it's this video right here. That's the video we were playing. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, so Evelyn says, question, how can I see you bigger? I see you at the bottom left in a small circle. That's up to me. See, I can make me bigger when I'm talking or if I'm trying to point out something, I can make me little when I'm sharing the screen or I can make me go away. I can make this go away so it's not uh, interfering. I should move it to this when I'm doing a lot of talking. This is the first time I've ever done this, so it's a learning curve, you know. Okay, and Fatima says, Nowadays, I pay attention on Facebook on Wednesday to find if you are available for us. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, I don't do this every Wednesday. Some Wednesdays, uh, it's too much happening for me that I can't do it. This is from Fatima. Question, could you also organize one session how to follow you in Ravelry? Oh, yeah, I could do that, but not today. I'd have to get ready for that. Miss no MS Nook Chili says no blurring. Marlene, question, FYI, if you have the notification spell activated, you will get a notification reminder that the live streams will be in 30 minutes. Thank you. That's good to know. Thank you. So if you have signed in to Google, and when I post the uh, video beforehand, when I schedule it, and I put it on Facebook, and, and Delise puts it on Ravelry for me, um, if you click on that screen at that time, there's a little thing that'll say, set a reminder. Click on that, and then it'll notify you 30 minutes before. I think that's where people have the most problem, is figuring out to get notifications for when I post a new video, and how to get the notifications for the live streams. So now let's go to how to use an iPad, the same thing, and continue asking questions, okay? Because the questions are what remind me to talk about things. So I've set my iPad up the same way. So I just went to, on my iPad, I just went to, um, and I can't use my cursor on this because, you know, your iPad you use with your fingers. I just went to YouTube. You can see that up at the very top. So then I would type in here, if I want to find me, I would just type in Suzanne. See how I'm typing? Brian. And hit search. So here's Netting with Suzanne Brian and my most recent videos. So if you're if those one of those videos is what you want to see, you can just click on it. But if you're looking for my channel, you can just click on my channel. And that takes you to the channel. Uh, this person has not subscribed yet. I wanted to show you this. See, so I have one screen that is for people who have not subscribed, and that's where I introduce myself. And then it once you subscribe, I hit subscribe. Sign in. It wants me to sign in. See, I can't subscribe without signing in. I'm going to sign in as, let's do this. I have an alternate account just so I can test. Okay. Now I'm signed in. And now 
can see it says subscribe. This took me. This is what happens. This is why I wanted to do this. This takes you to the YouTube app on your iPad. It goes to the YouTube app. This is not on Safari anymore or on your browser. This is the YouTube app. So I want to go back to Safari. I'm not going to subscribe. This is just, whoops. See, it wants to do that. Let's go back, back, back. Let's do YouTube, YouTube. Because, to tell you the truth, I prefer using the browser rather than the app. Okay? So, here we are in YouTube on the browser. So I can search, and it's recommending one of my videos to me. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to search Suzanne Bryan. Type it in the search bar and see what happens. There is Suzanne Bryan. And I'm click, going to click on it. Now that's my channel through your web browser. That is not the app. And it looks exactly like what we just went through on the desktop computer. So you use it exactly the same. But some people like to use the YouTube app. So then you would go to your, let's see, let's find, here's YouTube here. And now this is the app. And the app looks different. So there's Meet Suzanne, the videos, created playlists, and across the top, you notice across the top where it says home, videos, playlist, community. So those are similar. So those are the videos. And there is also, um, it says date added, newest. Do you see that right above the top video? If you click on that, you can, you can uh, search by most popular, the oldest, or the newest. And then there's the playlist. And this is very similar. Let me move my head over here. This is very similar to what we were looking at. So it's the playlist. So let's say you want to see the 10 bind off videos. So you click on that. And what's nice, do you see they just didn't start playing, which is kind of nice. So you can go and pick out which one you want to look at. This one's in here twice. I needed to fix that. Okay, so why do I like the browser better? That's a very good question. Let me go see. So, Judith Louch says you have to be online to get the notification. Um, I think you get an email or you can set up how you get your notifications. I don't get notifications, so somebody else that does that could maybe address that. Dolise says she enters the Ravelry thread called New Announcements from Suzanne 2020. So she always puts them in there for people that are on Ravelry. And Dolise says these announcements might be even the day up because, for example, I didn't decide to do this today until today. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy around here with the quarantine, and I have my daughter's family living here too, so my life is kind of chaotic right now, and I can't always count on being um, ready to do this right at 2 o'clock, so it's kind of a play it as I go. Um, Champ, why do you like the browser better? It's personal preference. I like the browser better. Let me go on here. I like the browser better because I erase all of my cookies and everything frequently so that um, sites don't follow me. And even on my phone and my iPad, I use the browser rather than the app. I use Facebook in the browser rather than the app. And that is because the browser 
I can close it and it's not following me around and listening to what I'm saying. Not that I am paranoid. But I do not get those apps that pop up, the ads that pop up all the time about something that I was just searching for or something that I just spoke about. I don't get those because I don't use the apps. I don't use Google app on my phone. I don't use Messenger, which is the Facebook app for messaging on my phone. I only use it on my computer because on my computer, I can close all of that down and it doesn't continually follow me around as I walking or driving or going to the store. Um, Google and Facebook, they like to follow you because that's how they market stuff. And I don't want them following me, although I'm sure that they all have plenty of information on me already, but that's just my personal preference. I also don't use Wi-Fi in unsecure situations. I only use Wi-Fi at my home where I know I have a firewall. Um, I don't use free Wi-Fi out in public ever. So it's, it's just personal preference. But then I have a network engineering son too, and so he, you know, kind of, sets the rules for me. Let's see. So does that answer that? Dolise says her notification pops up right in her phone or tablet, but if she's on Windows, 10 Dell laptop, that's synced with her Android phone. Um, I think they just pop up wherever your notifications pop up. So it depends on what kind of phone you use, whether you use an iPad, that kind of stuff. So are there any other, I was going to show on the phone too, but it got too complicated for me. It's very similar to using the, um, let me show you here. Um, if you go to YouTube on your phone. I think they just pop whoops. up wherever your notification. It's following me. That's the app on my phone. Okay, so I'm not going to do that because we'll get some feedback going on here. Let's see, Sue M says that the little list at the bottom will be an inbox in YouTube. You see a red dot that says, hey, look, you have a notice. I must look for it. If I'm doing other things, I do not see notification. Okay, Deborah says, Neuros, unassociated question. I really like the shade of lip color you're wearing today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. It belongs to my daughter. I don't normally wear lip gloss. I only put it on for these videos because otherwise I look totally washed out. I don't wear any makeup, period. <laughs> it's kind of the same reason that I don't use apps. You know, I just don't want to put stuff on my face. So I have skin sensitivities and like eye makeup and stuff gives me contact dermatitis and all that kind of stuff. So it's just personal preference. Okay. So anything else, I would like you, the best way you can help me to help you is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have already, get your friends to, if you belong to knitting guilds or whatever, show them how to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribers is the number one thing. Right now I have 62,600 subscribers. Whew. It's taken like eight years to get that many or more. Um, when you hit 100,000 subscribers, YouTube ups the game for you. And there's a lot of other, a lot of things. I don't even know what they are. But I know when you hit the goal of 100,000 subscribers, YouTube helps promote your channel more. Like they put you at the top of the list when you're looking for stuff. Yours will always pop up at the top of the list. That's really my goal. I would like to have 100,000 subscribers. I think it's probably going to take about two more years. Uh, at the rate that I'm going right now, but that's okay, you know. And I do plan, I have lists and lists and lists of video ideas that I'd like to make. It's just I have to feel very, very motivated when I make them. And I have not felt that way for a little while, but it's coming back. I'm getting my knitting mojo back, and then I start feeling like making videos. Okay, any other questions? I'll give you a second, okay? Did you like this? Did it work for you? Did it help you? 
I'm going to probably put this as the main video on both of my channels so people can learn how to use this. And I'll, I'll uh, think about making one for using Ravelry because Ravelry is the most awesome knitting tool. Uh, I think it's the best knitting tool that's come out probably since ever. I think it's just amazing. You may not agree with their politics, but I don't go to Ravelry for politics. I go to use it as a, re a knitting resource. Okay, I'm going to let you go. You guys have a good time. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you. Oh, this Saturday. Guess who I'm going to have on live this Saturday? Romy Hill, Rosemary Hill. Do you know her? She's awesome. Oh, my goodness. You're going to love it. You need to tune in Saturday, 2 o'clock Pacific Standard, Pacific Daylight Time. So I'll see you then. Have a good day. Happy knitting. And subscribe, subscribe.